just got to the office. Wanted to talk to you guys. You know, being an entrepreneur and a business owner has literally grown me professionally and personally in so many ways. It's literally the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. But honestly, it's come with a lot of challenges and a lot of failures. You know, my mission is to help 1 million people become entrepreneurs. And the sad and ugly truth about entrepreneurship and business ownership is that 50% of people are gonna fail in their first five years. And that's what I wanna change. So today's video is about entrepreneurship and the ugly truths behind it. We're gonna talk about the 10 things that you need to know if you're gonna become an entrepreneur, if it's something that you really want and you know that your life path is leading you there, you need to be aware of these things because it's gonna help you in the long term. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first truth that I wanna give you is clients are not easy. From finding clients, to negotiating with clients, to actually dealing with nightmare clients, I've had my fair share of those over the years, and you need to understand that dealing with clients and setting expectations is a very, very important part of your business. And if you actually shortcut some of these areas and you don't set the right expectations and you take on nightmare clients, you're going to struggle within your business and you're gonna burn out very quickly. So I wanna make sure that you understand that, that clients is a big area that people burn out and they just don't wanna do business and be a business owner anymore, because it's hard. Being a salesperson, negotiating and dealing with clients is not an easy thing for everybody, especially if you're an introvert. So that's the first ugly truth that you need to be aware of. It's not easy for everybody, okay? Now number two, and this is leading. A lot of people think that they have to start a business and be the boss. It's not about being a boss. Being a great leader is about being vulnerable, having a clear vision, having clear executables of what you're expecting from people and setting those realistic expectations. Just like you set expectations with your clients, you need to set expectations with the people that you're gonna be bringing onto your team as you start to build and lead. In the very beginning, it's gonna be just you. And so you need to be a leader and lead yourself by being consistent, being on time, by showing up every day for yourself. If you can't show up every day for yourself, how do you think you're gonna show up for your team? So as you continue to scale, this is gonna be a big challenge that you're gonna to have to come up against. This is something that I had to learn. And being a leader, whether you're one person or 100 people, is the same. You gotta be open, you gotta be accountable, and you gotta show up day in and day out consistently. Number three is scaling. Scaling is a very difficult part, and what this actually goes to is operations. Your operations of your business and how you scale and document things is really, really important. If you don't document the things that you're doing from doing design work, to doing website work, to doing marketing work, to doing motion design work, if you're not documenting these processes and it's all in your head, you do not have a business that's scalable. And if you want a business that's scalable because you wanna make more money and you want something that you can sell or you just wanna bring on people and have a community of people that work for you, you have to be able to scale it and document it. So you're gonna need systems in place and all these operational types of things that are really, really important as a business owner. Number four is cash flow. Cash flow is king. It's not about how much money you make, but it's about how much money you keep. And a lot of business owners, especially in the beginning, really struggle with this. I've gone through my struggles with cash flow over the years, and I've had to learn these things the hard way. You always need to be living and working below your means. And what I mean by that is not to underpay yourself, but to pay yourself an aggressive rate that is gonna push you, kind of put your back up against the wall to make you go out there and actually work hard. And so if you don't put enough pressure on yourself, you might become complacent. I've done this in the past. I've gone through lulls because I got comfortable with the amount of money that I was making. And when I noticed, when I started, stopped performing, I had to create some pressures and create some accountability pieces in my life with mentors and coaches, sort of bringing those people into my life to help me keep my cash flow right. And you need to be monitoring this stuff. This is stuff that you need to be looking at on a weekly basis. How much money is coming in and how much money is going out. Similar programs like QuickBooks and FreshBooks and Zoho Books, these are all programs that you can use. They're all very similar, can help you do that. You need to take five to 10 minutes out of your week to look at your cash flow, to look what you're bringing in, to look what you're spending, to understand if you're moving in the right direction or the wrong direction. 
If you don't have cash flow, you're not gonna be able to scale, you're not gonna be able to hire more people, and you're not gonna be able to serve your clients to the fullest that you really should be because you're gonna be worrying about your money. And you shouldn't be worrying about chasing money if you're providing great results. So this is a really big one for you, is cash flow is king. You need to focus on making sure you have enough cash in the bank and that you're making more than you're spending. The fifth ugly truth that I see with business owners is as they start to scale, the quality of the work significantly declines because they just pass off the work to an outsourced person, whether it's overseas or, or in, in, they call it insourcing or outsourcing. No matter where you send the work to, you have to document your processes and the things that have grown your business. And if you're just a single entrepreneur right now and you're wearing all these hats, your quality of work can also suffer because of that. So you just need to take into consideration that you need to slow things down to get more done. Maybe you need to tell your clients that it's gonna take you a little bit longer than it did before as you're scaling your business instead of taking three or four days or 24 hours. Maybe you need to tell them it's gonna take a week or a week and a half. Starting to adjust your turnaround times is a really good way to start to set the expectations so you don't lose the quality of your work. If your product starts to suck, then the clients are gonna see that and you're gonna have a hard time attracting people back to you. So don't wanna lose the quality of work. And quality of work is not only this the design work that you do, but it's also how you deal with your clients. If you're so busy that you're not able to get back to them, you're not communicating properly, you're gonna really see your business struggle. And a lot of people go into being a business owner without this understanding and all these things that I've mentioned so far. And that leads me to the sixth ugly truth, is being an employee in your own business. If you're an employee in your own business, that means the business owns you, you don't own the business. And a lot of people that own businesses are stuck in this, as they are stuck as the employee within their own business. They are the cog in the wheel and they are the bottleneck. If you don't have the right documents, if you don't have the right processes, you don't have the right systems, you're not managing your cash flow, and the quality of work is not doing well, then you are going to be the bottleneck and you're going to feel burnt out and you're gonna feel like an underpaid, underappreciated employee. So this is an ugly truth that I've had to deal with myself over the years, but I've learned through mentorship, through training, through consulting, to not be that bottleneck. I got into the point within my agency where I've actually been able to almost fully step out of the business. I go out and do consulting work, and that leads to fulfillment work. I now have members in my team that they're all going out and generating work as well without me. And eventually, the agency won't need me at all. So I am not an employee in my business, I actually am a business owner. The business does not own me, and this is a really important point that you need to be thinking about, you need to be taking into consideration, doesn't matter what size you are. In the very beginning, you're gonna wear more hats, but I really wanna encourage you to start to delegate it. You need to delegate your finances, you need to delegate these other areas, so you're not stuck and you're not the cog in the wheel. The seventh ugly truth about being an entrepreneur and a business owner, and this is a big one, is the long hours. When you're just starting out or you're at the very beginning of your career, clients are calling you after hours, they're calling you with emergencies, they're calling you with all kinds of situations. I need this project tomorrow. Can you get this to me now? I need this to go to the press. I need this to go online. I have somebody waiting on this. People's emergencies and lack of planning does not con constitute an emergency on your part. And you should not be working 14, 15, 16, 18 hour days. This is honestly the area that I probably struggled with the most in the very beginning because I loved my business and love what I do so much that it wasn't really work for me. And so I became obsessed and I, it became easy and I didn't set boundaries with my clients of working 40 hours a week. You should be able to accomplish everything you need to in 40 hours. If you decide to work more than that, that's great too, that's totally up to you, but don't burn the candle at both ends because what happened with me is I burned the candle at both ends for almost my entire 20s and it caught up to me in my health, in my relationships, and a lot of different areas of my life. And so now I'm having to catch up with those things and there are some things that I can't change. I've got psoriasis now. Why that happened exactly, I don't know, but I attribute it to sleep because there were years and years where I got very little sleep. And so you don't wanna burn the candle at both ends for too long. If you have an emergency here and there, that's understandable. I've pulled 24 hour shifts for clients and I'm willing to go over and above any of my competitors to produce the quality of work and to show that I'm gonna go over and above against everybody. But working those long hours is a road to it. It's honestly just a dead end road, as simple as that. So make sure that you're not focused on working crazy amount of hours. There's a lot of people out there like Arnold Schwarzenegger and some other people that have said, you should be working 16, 18 hour days. That's unnecessary. You should be able to work a normal nine to five schedule. And if you work smart and work right and not just work hard, 
you can do that in a 40 hour week. Now, the eighth ugly truth, and this is a big one, and this is why I was so desperate to build a team, is loneliness. When you're first starting off, whether you're a graphic designer, web designer, motion designer, or just any business owner in general, it can be really lonely. So you need to surround yourself, get into networking groups, get into communities, get onto Facebook groups, do mentorships, have coaches, have people that you can reach out to on a daily basis and have a five, 10, 15 minute huddle with people. Surround yourself with other people that have the success that you want, that you see, and other people that have the same synergies and have the same vibes. Your vibe is going to attract your tribe. You wanna find people that are aggressive, that are hungry, that are accountable, that are showing up, and that are successful. And so it can be really lonely as a business owner. I've had really lonely years, and as I've continued to grow and scale and bring more people on the team, I don't really have that problem anymore. And so I just wanna encourage you to surround yourself with other like-minded people, because being lonely in your business can be really tough, especially when you come from the employee world where you have coworkers and bosses and teammates and things like that, and going to an entrepreneur where you're working at home during quarantine, that can be really tough. So that's an ugly truth that you need to just understand and realize, and this is just another thing on the list and an, another ugly truth of why you know, entrepreneurship isn't always for everybody. If you can't handle these things and you're not resilient and you're not tough, entrepreneurship is gonna be really difficult for you. And it may not, it may not be the best thing, but I believe that majority of people can be an entrepreneur and they can find it very rewarding if they know these things. The ninth ugly truth about being a business owner is the pressure. Oh my gosh. Let me talk about pressure for a minute. Imagine having $40,000 a month that you're responsible for between your office space, your employees, your software, your advertising spend, your marketing budgets, all the different things, your payroll, your taxes, your bookkeeping, your attorneys. Being a business owner has a ridiculous amount of pressure and that pressure can get to people. So you just need to understand that when those pressures come, that the pressure was always there. And what it's doing is it's revealing weaknesses. Weaknesses that you have and areas of opportunity for you to grow in. There's a lot of things that have put pressure on me, my taxes. I'm not great with finances, but I brought in an outside expert to help me with that so that I could take that pressure off of me. The delegating of my operations, that's not my zone of genius. I don't like to be the guy pulling the levers and doing all the things and delegating work and managing projects. I'm not a project manager. So the pressure is real, especially as an entrepreneur. So you just need to be aware that there's gonna be a lot of pressure. And if you can't handle that, it's like the heat. If you can't take the heat in the kitchen, probably just wanna get out, because it's not for everybody. The pressure is real, but you can do things like delegating to people that are more talented in the areas that you're not to reduce that pressure. And you just need to remember, this is an important note for you, that crisis reveals opportunity. Any of these pressures and things that happen, any of these fires that you have to put on your business, reveal opportunities for you to grow in, your company to grow in, you personally to grow in. So these are really great things that you can do to help, help you become a much better business owner. Which leads me to the 10th ugly truth, and that is outside circumstances. There are gonna be things as a business owner that you just can't control quarantines, economies, recessions, employees quitting, things happen. And you have to understand that you can't cuss a cat for being a cat. Things are gonna come at you and it's all about how you handle them. It's not how far you fall, but it's how high you bounce up. I know I'm giving some of these cliche lines, but they're really important and there's a lot of truth to them. You need to understand that there's a lot of outside circumstances of things that you can't control and you just need to keep pushing forward. You need to be like water on a duck's back and just let it roll off you and keep going. Challenges, crises, failures, all these things are gonna happen and it's a natural part of being a business owner and you just need to understand to keep going. I'm here for you, I'm a support system. That's why I created the Instagraphics Pro Network for people that are going through these challenges that wanna grow, that wanna remove those roadblocks and I would be so honored to have you part of that Facebook group with us and these are the 10 ugly truths. So I hope these all help you. There's too many business owners out there that are naive, that really needed this information, and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys today. So I hope this helps. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.